So that was the disappointment mm-hmm. of the night for me. I think that out of every match in that card, I cared more about the Divas match. I thought the Divas match was tremendous. But then getting to the main event, I was just sort of like, meh. Yeah, there there were there were chairs, there were tables, and there were ladders, and I can not really care about it. Tell me if you guys felt this way about TLC, but it was just kind of like a real strong like chain of momentum going all the way into the main event and then once the bell ring it just plummeted all the way down like it's like oh wait a minute this is just going to be another john cena randy orton match it's not very eventful i wouldn't say it was a plummet or anything like that but it wasn't my favorite match either i think it was a decent main event and like i said the pay-per-view overall was definitely the best since SummerSlam. I just wasn't really feeling it. There wasn't any huge spot or anything. Um, it just, it worked, but it, it wasn't anything spectacular. It was just a good, it was a good ending, not great. It kind of felt uninspired in a way because, I mean, they took a spot from the TLC match two years ago between The Miz, CM Punk, and Alberto Del Rio, where CM Punk got handcuffed to the ropes and then he undid the turnbuckle. They took that spot and reused it in the main event of that pay-per-view. Like, that's ridiculous. See, this is why I should do my homework and look over the the times when I wasn't watching, because here I was thinking, oh, that that was pretty creative. I'd never seen that before. (laughs) (laughs) I just hadn't seen that match because it was during my dark ages. Well, I gotta ask, those. why do you feel like that, Keith? feel like it was uninspired yeah well i mean it was just like there was more steel steps shots in a tables ladders and chair match than there were like chair shots or table spots or ladder spots it just felt like they were going through their typical hardcore match not a tlc match well uh, uh, there's a lot of ways we can talk about this i think the best example would be uh, i think we've all seen it the uh, backlash match between randy orton and mick foley slash cactus jack in that match, mm-hmm. Randy had uh, a guy that's an expert in this type of match. But now we got two guys that aren't known for this at all. They're known for the standard. They're known for like the big WrestleMania matches, but no, no specialty matches. So put them together, and you you factor in the fact that you know there's no blood. There's a lot of factors that used to play out in, the, in these great matches, and I don't. I just don't think that it should have been this. It shouldn't have been at, at TLC. This pay per view going with the whole that the. Uh, the whole topic that they maybe weren't uh, doing big enough spots or weren't extreme enough for a TLC match. The circumstances are very different than a lot of the best hardcore and TLC matches. You look at that backlash match that you mentioned, Juan. At that time, Orton was really young and really hungry and willing to do whatever it takes to stand out. And he's in there with Foley, who's just always putting his body on the line. So it's very different circumstances. And you look at the best uh, triangle TLC matches, and those guys were all hungry and trying to stand out in an, in an attitude era with The Rock and Steve Austin. And now you've got two guys, John Cena and Randy Orton, in a match where they're just trying to protect themselves and not get hurt because they're already at the top of the food chain. They don't have to really bust themselves to stand out so it's very different. They're not going to do something. They're not going to do a swanton off the ladder outside the ring through a table. You know, they're oh, no. they're trying to protect I themselves. I get that. I agree. They could do more, but that's maybe the thinking here. But I don't think the fact that it wasn't extreme enough wasn't really the problem with that match. Like, if you look back at the big spots, like Randy Orton basically no sold when he went through, the, like, off the apron through the table. The end of the match where John Cena was supposed to go through a table, I believe that was a botch. Like, he was supposed to go through the table. Mm -hmm. And it's just those little things like that. Like, when Randy Orton was on the ground hitting John Cena with that microphone, he hit him with the microphone end that makes the sound. So every time Randy Orton missed, you could tell because, like, it just wouldn't make a sound. It's those little things like that. It's kind of the opposite of what made the CM Punk Shield match so great. It's those little things that you do in a match that just kind of make it like that classic moment. And I felt like that match had none of those. No, and and one thing that we're completely leaving out of the match, all they know is creativity. Because a lot of the... Think about, like, some of the biggest hardcore match spots they usually involve tables or something that honestly uh, in in almost every interview i've heard wrestlers like the tables why they actually break the fall 
in a lot of spots, like uh, when whenever the guy has like the, the the steel steps, you know, they're they're holding them. The other guy like hits him with a chair, so like the steel steps fall on him. Yeah, that doesn't hurt them at all because I mean he's like right between that wedge. So I just think they could have been more creative in figuring out. Okay, great. So we have this you know limitation because I think it's what you mentioned, Ryan. That's exactly it. These are the two two top guys. It's not the middle of the match. Uh, the the middle uh, card match or something, you know, they got to take care of each other. You know, this is probably going to head over to WrestleMania or whatever. So they need to be able to to stall for time to make sure that especially Cena just coming back from an injury, he doesn't come back. But that doesn't mean that you can't figure out, okay, how do we work around this? How do we do more? Especially when you just got two great teal, uh, two great handicap matches. You even got a great diva match. What do you have to offer? Well, handcuffs. Really? So I have a question for you guys. Do you think that was the reason why there wasn't another TLC match on that pay-per-view? Because they were kind of feeling subpar about that, and they didn't want another match to overshadow the whole title unification thing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there were a lot of matches that could have had the TLC or even just ladder match stipulation. The tag team match, we had that all the time in some of the other pay-per-views. Uh, especially when SmackDown had a pretty active tag division a couple years ago, that would be the the latter match when it was like Eminem and Will and Regal and Dave Taylor. When you had those tag teams, that's when it was really there. And so there is no excuse yeah. to not have that now, except that. No, I completely truck. <laughs> What? <laughs> just, what? Just the way you did it. The way you yeah. said it. Trunk, trunk. <laughs> Whatever. There's a big ass plow truck going. Well, there's by. one for the blue yeah. reel. Big ass plow truck. <laughs> anyway, I completely agree that they didn't want to outshine the main event. And especially you look at last year where they did a ladder match and a TLC and there were basically no difference in stipulation wise between them because the ladder match just used chairs and tables anyway. So I think it actually was good to save it because this was their undisputed unified champion match, whatever. They don't want it to get outshined by any other match on the card. So it was actually smart to save it for the main event only with these stipulations and it's just sort of f- further proving the uh pointlessness of having these themed pay-per-views when just have a pay-per-view and throw a tlc match on it you don't need to call the whole damn thing tlc 